Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and hello and welcome to Mold 87. We have uh, this one that has quite an interesting opening and then we've got two smaller holes on the other side. So gently poured that one up and look as it drips out, it was really satisfying. I poured those other two sides up and overfilled them because they were deceptively small even though I poured them so gently. I let it dry for, I don't know, 24 hours and I open it up and I still don't really know what it is until I flip this over and I am so excited. Can you see what this is? It is a little frog sponge holder. I actually had a message about this recently, but I'll talk more about that in a second. I also noticed it had this cute little attachment of its little webby feet and this fly, which I actually really struggled to pull out. This is sped up by like four times just to show you how long it took me to sort of wiggle that little critter out. So I'm not exactly sure where the fly has to go yet, but here's your little look at the mold. It's called a frog ashtray. I mean, you can use it as an ashtray, but I know about this piece because someone messaged me ages ago and asked, do you have one of those frog sponge holders? Uh, and I was like, what is that? What is that? And they sent me photos of this exact piece. So essentially what they were used for or what they are still used for, I mean, I want to bring these back, is a holder for the sponge so it doesn't just sit and like get all damp on your bench. You've got like a specific spot to put it in. It also can work as like a ring holder or I don't know, and maybe an air plant holder. It has so many uses because of that big wide mouth, of course, an ashtray as well. But I was so excited when I opened this up because I had no idea that that's what the mold would look like. I totally figured it would be like one piece. And also the photos I saw of this piece didn't have the fly attachment. So that was a nice little addition as well. I like this piece in particular because it's one of the ones where the attachment lines up. It shows you how to exactly where to put it on. So there's no guesswork. And I just, I think I just like that because I know that the creator of the mold thought about the next creator and how they would interpret it and how they might interpret it wrong. So I kind of really like when they think about, yeah, who they're making the molds for and that they want them to get the best result. So I squished that feet on after cross hatching and adding some slip and I had to put my fingers in the frog's mouth or toad's mouth, whatever you want to call it, and to support the feet as I pushed in because as I pushed in, it kind of pushed the frog inwards. So I wanted to avoid that and keep it nice and flat on the bottom. Let's talk about what we're, what we're gonna create this week. I am very excited because no texture, yay. We love it when there's not much texture because it means we can do some magical illustrative work and get really inspired. I mean, texture's great too. It has a place, but it's been a while since we've had a really plain piece to work with. So I'm just so excited. So I brainstormed what I would think about a toad or a frog. And I don't know why, I don't know if there's many Futurama or Simpsons fans on here, I'm, I'm not sure, um, but I thought of that Hypnotoad that comes on the TV in Futurama and it has all these like psychedelic patterns and its eyes do all the weird things and like hypnotizes people. And then I also thought about in The Simpsons, I, I, I really vaguely recall an episode, maybe it was in something else, I don't know. I remember this episode of someone licking a frog. <laughs> like a, a colorful frog and then turning like psychedelic rainbow like uh i tried to find a reference of this up but i could not find it anywhere and i think i've been mandela affected because i was looking and i was like maybe it was from another cartoon like someone licked a frog i swear and like turned rainbow and it like washed over them like they were really sick or something I swear I remember it being in something. So if you know what I'm referencing and it's not the Simpsons or the Futurama episode, um, can you please let me know? Cause I was looking for hours. I was literally like rainbow person licks frog, rainbow person licks toad. And I was doing all these searches, but I couldn't find it. But that is the inspiration, a random phantom memory in my brain about someone licking a frog and the colors they turned after they licked the frog. <laughs> My Google search history is like really uh, questionable. I like, I wonder what people, if I was getting investigated, what they were thinking, like, why is this person looking up 
licking toads and getting psychedelic rainbowness like why are they looking this up and every mold week i kind of do some research like vomiting cow junk like <laughs> like could you imagine if they looked up my search history so this week's inspiration we are doing some sort of trippy psychedelic rainbow effects on the backs of these toads to sort of resemble my memory of what the person looked like after they licked the frog maybe it's just my memory that we're seeing come to life on the back of these pieces right now I did one with this sort of cool rainbow effect and then I did two others with this sort of same sort of concept of these um, like almost like lava lamp swishy swashy blobs and I did them in a four colorway palette. It was actually really really fun. I know that these are just lines but it was actually so therapeutic and really really cool to watch because even though you're only using four colors the way the four colors bounced off each other in each sort of increment and line work they kind of made this texture and made it look like there were more colors on the piece than what actually were just because of the way they complemented each other at each stage and changed shape and moved with the piece it was actually quite hypnotizing <laughs> i really really enjoyed this week uh for a, a very simple and minimal design it was quite intense and quite uh, detailed I also noticed as I was painting these pieces that they look like something I'd seen before and they remind me of contour maps. So maps of uh, like a landscape to indicate where the hills are and where the flatter areas are and where rivers are and things like that. So they kind of ended up resembling like a sort of contour map, which made me think that we were kind of mapping out the frog's journey across its landscape and all the places it had been. And as it went to a new place, it would get Get this new sort of contour map and design added to its back. I guess like a badge of honor for the spaces it had hopped to. I actually questioned whether I should do the hypnotoad eyes as the eyes, but I opted not to because I felt like it might have been just a little bit too much because the hypnotoad has like a sort of normal, I guess like print on the back rather than like hypnotizing um, psychedelic rings. So I thought I'd do my normal eyes, but I, I definitely think these would look great with the hypnotoad at eyes as well I also did two with flowers because I couldn't help myself and I just thought they would be so sweet with flowers as well so I did two at the end there as well I wanted to touch on something um, that I mentioned earlier is that this is probably the second time I've had an experience of the Mandela effect in these videos. I think the second time there might have been more. The Mandela effect is having these sort of false memories about something and believing that they are true and it also being something that a lot of people remember to be true but I'm not even sure if my Mandela effect of the person turning rainbow is is a collective memory. I shared that thought with two people when I was painting these, these toads and both people were like, yeah, I remember that. And I was just like, oh yeah, sure. So it would be easy to find online then to use as a reference in the video. And I couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm wondering if everyone else knows what I'm talking about, or not even everyone, just a small collective group to prove that it was a Mandela effect or whether it was, it actually happened. So put, pop a link in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. I just cannot find it where I've had this reference of licking a toad and turning rainbow. Uh, the other time this has happened was actually in another mystery mold video. I posted a video with a bear on a honeypot and used it as a reference for sort of like a Winnie the Pooh inspired piece. It wasn't meant to be like Winnie the Pooh because you know copyright, but it was an inspired piece by Winnie the Pooh and I popped a badge on there that spelt honey. And honey in Winnie the Pooh is spelled H-U-N-N-Y. In my experience of watching Winnie the Pooh, honey was always spelled with the two ends in honey written the correct way, like the, the right way it's meant to be written. And I even looked up references as I was painting this to make sure that I was spelling it right. That was the only reason I looked up references was to see if I was spelling it right. And nowhere in my search did I see the N backwards uh, from like the actual original cartoon. 
when I posted that video, it went off. Like people were telling me that I put the end the wrong way because there's meant to be one end the wrong way because because I think the owl in Winnie the Pooh actually can't spell very well despite being really, really smart. There were all these different reasons. And then I got messages of people sending me screenshots of the N backwards. And I was baffled because I then looked it up because I was like, oh, this can't be happening. And I looked it up and I couldn't find the, the reference photos that they were sending me. And I was just so perplexed by what was going on. And all these people that were like, no, it's the ends both the right way, the ends backwards, or yeah, just all these different memories and recollections of how just like one simple iconic movie or TV show or pop culture reference was experienced so differently and we have so many different memories of the same experience. It's actually, I find the Mandela effect is quite an interesting thing and if you haven't heard of it before, definitely look it up because it's quite, quite fascinating. Uh, I would love to know what your favorite Mandela effects are in the comments as well if you like. Uh, I also would love to know when you were sort of tricked by a Mandela effect like I was this week uh, when you definitely recall something as being true and when you looked it up it was actually something that I guess like a collective memory or your own memory had sort of warped its interpretation. You know the drill, once these were all painted up, I had to glaze them. In the yellow frogs, I glazed them yellow on the inside and then blue on the blue frogs. And here is the finished result. I am obsessed. These are so fabulous. So I want to show you each and every one of these in uh, just real time because they are so fabulous. I, I can't stop looking at them. So the reason for going for a colored glaze in the center was I want it to be just as much of an attraction as the outside, but also not to take away from the outside detail and all the time that Put, was put into those designs. These designs actually took a really long time for what they actually look like. Very simple, but they just, oh, it was just so time intensive doing all the lines and making sure they were three coats each. But the glaze is just meant to, I guess, like highlight the fact that this mouth is so wide and open. You don't just want it to be wide, I guess, is because you kind of like detract from the whole um, big wide shape and it's a big focus of the piece especially given that that's the way it's going to sit on your bench. I cannot pick a favorite this week. They have filled my cup up so much. I, I put so much time into them and it was worth every single painstaking line. I am so impressed with them and I'm so glad I kept going. There was a point where I was like, oh, is this going to be worth it doing all these lines? It was worth it. It was so worth it. I'm actually excited to try different colorways of both the sort of like full swirlies and the sort of contour matte black swirlies because I think you can just get so many different colorways that just change the entire feel of this piece. I, I'm really excited and I love the pieces that uh, I've been inspired with so much inspiration actually inspire me to make more of them. I wanted to show you them in use. Uh, yeah, great for rings, great for sponges. Here's me you know, showing you that holds a sponge <laughs> like you needed the demonstration, but it's just great to visualize, I guess. I am just oh, so wrapped with these. What do you think of this piece? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to remind you to like and subscribe because it helps me so much. And here's your sneak peek for the next reveal.